Hello and welcome to The Pulse. Later in the show, the Territory-Wide System Assessment, or TSA tests, that were supposed to evaluate and help schools, but are placing extra workload and pressure on school children. Also on education, or maybe not, the latest delay in appointing the University of Hong Kong's new Pro Vice Chancellor. Is this the latest sign of political meddling in universities? First, though, since the handover, the morning of July 1st has been an occasion for backslapping and celebration for an establishment in a circle, while the afternoon has been a chance for many Hong Kongers to take to the streets to express their hopes and dissatisfactions. There were huge turnouts in 2003 and last year, but far fewer people took part this Wednesday. Were they taking a rest now that government attempts at what they consider fake universal suffrage have been defeated, or has the wind been taken out of the democracy movement. It could have been the murderous heat or maybe the desire for a respite after the voting down of government proposals for electing the chief executive, or it could even be that political protest is taking on new forms in Hong Kong. But whatever the reasons, there were fewer people marching at the July 1st rally. Some people think the rally is now trying to embrace a grab bag of issues. For example, there were protesters demanding smaller health warnings on cigarette packets. Other potential protesters have said they're put off by the increasing radicalism of localists who force themselves to the front of the march. The rally organiser, the Civil Human Rights Front, is distancing itself from the localists. It does, however, want Chief Executive Lan Chung Ying to step down, and it wants serious consideration given to amending the basic law. Others are warning this is a dangerous strategy. This is not our priority at the moment. The problem is not with the basic law. The problem is with the fact that the liaison office Beijing and the Hong Kong government are not sticking to the provisions in the basic law, but are trying to rewrite and to reinterpret the basic law. So I think our first priority now is to make the government adhere to one country, two systems, a high degree of autonomy and Hong Kong people ruling Hong Kong. Moderate pro-Democrats took the opportunity to encourage people to register as voters and focus on getting Democrats elected in the upcoming District Council and Legislative Council polls. We have been asking people to register as voters uh, because the deadline is the 2nd of July. So today is uh, almost the last day. Uh, but we have been calling on them to register and we hope they will turn out to vote in November. The pro-establishment group Defend Hong Kong campaign set up a booth at Causeway Bay and was also urging supporters to register as voters in order to make sure Democrats don't get those district council and LegCo seats. Dozens of police separated the groups to make sure there was no conflict between the pro-establishment group and the pro-Democrat marchers. The march was over much earlier than usual. By 5.30 p.m., the tail end had already passed through Causeway Bay. But many of those present say the struggle for genuine democracy is not even close to weakening. It's usual during the July 1st rally for different groups to set up their booths at the roadside for fundraising. This year, the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department refused temporary hawkers' licenses to many of them. This year, there is a lot of similar cases that police are trying to stop us from setting up groups in uh, both Causeway Bay and in Admiralty. And then maybe in the next two years, then they will say it is not suitable to have a rally because this will be a obstruction for our daily life. So it's kind of our freedom of expressions, our freedom of assembly is being squeezed and eroded by police order. The government refused permission for the rally to end at the civic square of the central government offices. Instead, it ended in the nearby Tim May Avenue. 
the Civil Human Rights Front announced that around 48,000 people took part, 9% of the 510,000 people they estimated to have marched last year. Police say there were 19,650 people at the peak of the march. While the organisers said they expected a smaller turnout, they point out that the march provides a necessary counterpoint to the pro-government self-congratulatory celebrations held on the Hong Kong Establishment Day. We have to do something on 1st of July in order to fight against this kind of discourse and in order to show that Hong Kong people are unwilling to be eroded uh, of their own high degree of autonomy. Last weekend in Taiwan, around 500 people were burned, with more than 290 placed under intensive care after coloured powder sprayed on revellers in an amusement park that caught fire. Two have since died. Colour events based on India's Festival of Colours, or Holi, where people are doused in bright dyes, have become increasingly popular. They include runs, dances and even children's festivals. But last weekend's inferno has raised more concerns about safety. In the wake of last weekend's inferno, as many victims are struggling to recover from severe burns, Taiwanese authorities have questioned the organiser, Lu Chung Chi, of Colour Play Asia. Many of those injured were students in their 20s and late teens who had just started their summer vacation. Two teenage Hong Kong girls came back to the city via charter flight this week for further treatment. The powder that ignited so easily seemed harmless enough, a mixture of cornstarch and food dyes, but the company that made it had said it was inflammable and there were warnings on the packaging not to use it in enclosed spaces or under high temperatures. Actually, you can see that they are in a pool area, so it's actually a semi-enclosed area and they have constantly using an uh, air blow machine to blow up the cornflower so that it will suspend in the air again. So uh, with this kind of continuous supply of air current, they try to raise up the cornflower in the particular pool area. So it's actually create a semi enclosed kinds of area that have to build up a very substantial amount of airborne uh, cornflower. So they end up with a very uh, uh, dangerous situations, a small spark or small flame can actually ignite the whole thing and end up with the dust explosions. So-called colour events have been gaining popularity in recent years, even in Hong Kong. Last year's Colour Run Hong Kong temporarily brightened up the city streets and attracted many participants. The organiser wants to arrange another one this year. The Hong Kong organisers say the coloured powder they use has been tested and meets European Union fire safety standards. Another similar event, Life in Colour, world's largest paint party 2015, is planned for the end of the month at Asia World Expo. The fire department is now testing the colour powder they plan to use. The Asia World Expo said the event will not be held unless all safety precautions are in place. 粉紅水,是不是水劑,就根據你們總公司講呢一隻是無意義定是那個物料是怎樣的呢?無意義的,沒有毒的,沒味的。For my understanding, uh, even though it is a water suspended uh, corn flour, so when you spray out uh, at a particular condition, it is also possible to create some form of arousal. That means the uh, liquid is actually uh, split up into very, very fine mists of solutions so that it will subject also to the risk that it can be ignited at some scenario. The problem now will become that it's not only the material that causes the problem, but also how you use it, the environment, and also the people contribute to that particular uh, event, how, uh, whether they will like have, a, um, have an open flame, whether they will have a very hot surface. In the meantime, many victims of last Saturday's inferno are on the road to recovery. But for those who suffered the severest burns, it will be a long road. They could need many rounds of operations, including skin grafts. NGOs in both Taiwan and Hong Kong have already started raising funds to help them. 
。始終公營嘅醫療咧，最主要都係幫助你喺前期植皮啊，甚至乎一啲治療性嘅，而唔係誒隨後嘅美化。咁美化呢啲就唔屬於係公營醫療嘅責任治療。咁，當你之後可能要做一啲激光啊，或者啲疤痕嘅改善嘅手術咧，咁就真係需要去到私人嘅嘅醫生或者醫院裏面去接受。咁嗰個嘅費用係唔平噶，所以我哋嘅籌款都係希望喺經濟上面可以俾到佢哋一啲嘅支援，等佢哋冇咁彷徨咯。Welcome back. On Tuesday, members of the University of Hong Kong Council voted 12 to 6 to yet again defer a decision on the recommended appointment of Johannes Chan as a pro vice chancellor. They argue this is so that a replacement for deputy vice chancellor Ronald Chin, who resigned in November, can have a say in the appointment. However, since announcing his resignation, four pro vice chancellors have already been named with no such considerations. The delay to the appointment of a figure attacked by pro Beijing media as being too pro democratic once again raises concerns about academic independence. Well, with us in the studio is a man who's no stranger to academic politics, Joseph Cheng. Joseph Cheng, you're three days out of your retirement from City yes. University. Is this something that seems to be? Not just confined to City U and possibly the University of Hong Kong. Is there something going on in the university sector in Hong Kong? Well, I think there are broad trends which are worrying. Um, in the first place, it has to do with the Chinese authorities' tolerance of opposition and critics. Once the Chinese authorities perceive the kind of uh, is uh, their relation. The relationship with the civic, with the civil society, with the pro-democracy movement, as one of contradictions between enemies, then the level of tolerance will decline dramatically. Can, the can second, you there, can, can you date that to a particular period? I would say in the recent two or three years, uh, since the beginning of the deliberations on uh, on the. Political reforms and the initiative regarding the uh, Occupy Central campaign. Then the second factor has to do with the use of the powers of appointment at the hands of the chief executive. Since the colonial era, the chief executive in Hong Kong, the governor, and now the chief executive, they have very broad powers of appointments to university councils. Uh, if the chief executive choose to make appointments on the basis of uh, the best qualification judici judiciously, then such powers are all right. But if the uh, chief executive chooses to make those appointments on the basis of political loyalty, political reliability, then you have a lot of problems. Then finally, because of the pursuit of higher international rankings, the pressures on academics are quite severe. Um, they practically, especially on the part of young academics, they really don't have the time to engage in uh, social activities because uh, there are so much work pressures What on about them. teaching? Because uh, a lot of those rankings uh, depend on, on publication, not actually on teaching. Uh, ranking, uh, um, teaching becomes relatively unimportant because under such circumstances the most important thing is to get publications in top international journals uh, to get renewal of contracts promotions and so on and even if you have to leave those will be most helpful then you are asked to uh, to secure a major research grant from various institutions and so on. And as long as, long as you don't alienate and antagonize the students, as long as you don't get too many complaints, you are more or less all right. And let's just return to the other question that you raised, which is about appointment to university councils. I mean, there's been some high profile appointments that have been quite politically contentious. Do you think there is a deliberate attempt to get university councils to, put it bluntly, to be more pro-government? Uh, 
I tend to think so. You see, right at the beginning of the Xi Jinping administration, he tried to appoint some kind of political czar attached to the central policy unit to vet all uh, university, to vet all government appointments to various uh, consultative committees and so on, advisory bodies, etc., including university councils. So there. Uh, gossip, speculations that you have uh, a lot of CY Leung fans on university councils nowadays. Well, Joseph Cheng, thank you very much indeed. Still on education, the aim of the Territory Wide System Assessment, or TSA, is supposedly to help schools and the education system assess their strengths and weaknesses, teaching students English, Chinese, and mathematics. It allegedly doesn't affect students' academic records. So how come it's placing even more pressure on already highly pressurized children? How do you feel about the whole drilling or uh, practicing? It makes me even more and more hate them. I really want to throw them away. Starting studying from 8 in the morning all the way down to four, half past 4 for a child. <laughs> Just like child labor. Colum Chu, a primary six student, is one of hundreds of thousands of students in local schools required to attend the Education Bureau's Territory-Wide System Assessment Tests, or TSA. It is an exam that tests student abilities in Chinese, English, and mathematics. It was introduced in 2004 for primary three, primary six, and secondary three students. Colin's mother says that the test and the associated exercises simply demoralize children. She and other parents set up the TSA Parent Consent Group to look into the matter. When he was in P3, um, because that's the first time I came, in, I was in touch with TSA, and when I read um, the exercises that he is doing at school and at home, and, the, and also the extra lessons that he had to go to every Saturday morning, I found it pretty ridiculous for an eight-year-old child to go through all these kind of mechanical drillings and exercises. The government officials, officials started to visit different sponsoring bodies and ask questions and blame the, 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 the sponsoring bodies and the pressure is uh, therefore you know, put on to the their subordinates and for the principals and the teachers and so on. In the past five years, the Professional Teachers Union conducted three surveys on the impact of TSA. The latest one conducted between March and June with about 2,000 educators show that some 65% of teachers want TSA to be stopped. They said the TSA put unnecessary pressure on principals, teachers and young students. Yeah, 他的練習作業其實全部都大部分都跟足那個題型去做。You see, this is ridiculous. It, it looks like a um, mock paper, is this a mock paper? They even not got the computer print out to practice, you know, because in the real assessment you have to do this, and they are doing that. 
and so in order to get students familiarized with the system and and for comp just now he mentioned comprehension for passages plus uh, uh, writing right plus yes. writing and you they're only given 50 minutes to complete 50 minutes for writing and the rest for and reading reading and writing at the same time 50 minutes many students and teachers say that the heavy workload has become unbearable Last week, the Education Secretary, Adi Ng, defended the TSA. He said there is no need for teachers and students to prepare for the tests. He insisted it is just a tool to gauge students' general ability. And that's all we have time for on The Pulse this week. We'll leave you with some images of this year's July 1st March and see you at the same time next week. Goodbye.